k. So just the basics on probability. <coughs> Let's suppose we have n distinct events that could occur in some situation. Okay. And we can assign a number p of i to each event i. of i would be the probability of event i occurring. And the probability function should have the property that the sum for i equals 1 to n, the total number of events possible for each pi, should equal 1. Okay. So for example, if I were to flip a fair coin, the probability that the coin would be heads would be a half, and the probability that the coin would be tails would be a half. And from this concept of probability, we can derive the concept of expected value. Now let's suppose that you're spinning a spinner or something and whatever the spinner points to is an amount of money you get after you spin the spinner. Let's call x the amount you would get an result i. And we can call p of i the probability of event i occurring. Okay, then the expected value, which we write E of x for expected value of x would be equal to the summation of i equals 1 to n for all the n separate events times p of i times x of i for each result. So for example, <coughs> I could go to Lake Tahoe and I could set up a little game where I have people roll one die and tell them that I'll pay them the amount of money that turns up on spots on the die. Okay, so there's six different events that could occur here because there's six different <coughs> possibilities on the die. So if we roll a die, we have six possible events. six possible outcomes, and we get an amount x equal to the number on the die. Okay. So the expected value of playing that game, or the expected outcome for rolling the die, what would be the probability of each different outcome rolling a, a fair die? Right, it's just one six. If the die is fair, there's a one six probability that each separate event will occur. So it's one six times one. That's one six times two, and so on. <coughs> and this expected outcome comes out to be three point five. So our expected value of playing this game would be three and a half dollars or three fifty. So can anyone give me <coughs> an intuitive explanation of what this expected value means in terms of playing this game? Yes, Michael. Um, they probably charge you three and a half dollars to play it, otherwise it lose money. Okay. <laughs> if they could charge you three fifty to play it, and over the long run we'd expect to be even because some people would win, but an equal number of people would lose money. And so over a long amount of time, we'd expect 
exactly 350, and that's what the game costs to play. What if uh, we were charging, say, four bucks to play this game? Profit. Right, we'd get some profit. Some people would obviously win, but there'd be more people losing. <coughs> Can you explain where you got the, the one times one six plus two times one six? Okay, the one six is the probability of each different event occurring, where we said each event was some roll of the die. So if you have a six-sided die, <coughs> there's one six chance that each side will come up. And each side of the die has either a one or a two, or three or four or five. That's, that's not a multiplication uh, then? Uh, these are multiplied. In here. Yeah. It's one six times one. Okay, so the expected value, we're multiplying each probability by the value of each outcome. Any other questions over this concept? Okay, notice that we'd never actually get 3.5 if we play this game once. It's just, on average, we could expect to get 350 by playing this game. Okay, another type of game we can think of is a lottery. <coughs> so we have four possible outcomes. So this isn't like go and spin the big wheel or anything like that. So we don't want to make it too complicated. And let's say that with 1 20th probability, you win $5. Okay, and there's a 1 1,000th chance <coughs> of winning $100. One out of a hundred thousand chance <coughs> of ten thousand dollars. Okay, so these are our possible outcomes. The other possible outcome would be otherwise we get zero. So what would be the expected value from playing this lottery? Would you have to add those probabilities up and subtract it from one to get zero? Uh, to get the probability for zero? Yeah, to get the probability of zero, this would be... It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter because we're multiplying it all by zero. You're right. <coughs> okay, so the probability or the expected value of playing this game would be 1 20th, so e of x here, is 1 20th of $5 plus 1 1,000th one of 100, so that's 0 0.1 plus one one hundred thousandth of ten thousand, so that's another point one, which is zero point four five. And so we expect on average to get back forty five cents by playing this this lottery. Okay. So and it just turns out that this is approximately the value of playing the California lottery, which costs a dollar to play. So if I tell you the California lottery toss, costs a dollar to play and there are people who play it anyway, even though the expected value looks something like this, what would you assume about these people? Or why might this outcome, why might we uh, have this result that people play the lottery even though they're facing this real low expected value? <laughs> well, that could be one. That could be one explanation. That's one of the big criticisms of the lottery system, is that it punishes those who <laughs> don't have much concept of what probability is. <laughs> Any other 
ideas, yeah. Yeah, there may be something other than this monetary value. They get a utility, or they get enjoyment from actually play, playing the lottery. There's a chance they can win. Right, there is a chance they can win, but it's a one one hundred thousandth chance. And so we might say that people might place a really large emphasis or a really large value on this ten thousand dollars, which makes them pay it anyway, even. Uh, with a small expected outcome. Okay. So this is an important question. <coughs> now we could say that a fair gamble is one that costs exactly its expected outcome. So a fair lottery here would have a 45 cent value on all the lottery tickets. And the people running the lottery or the state would never make any money that way. So they'd take in, on average, exactly how much that they pay out. Are there any questions over this concept of expected values and how we use it? Okay. <coughs> 